So my report for today is the, or individual research report for Think Tank, is joint stock companies in the 17th uh, century, 1700s, and, and on until the late 1800s. Um, so joint stock companies were ventures or companies created by the governments or establishments that were run and owned by rich people or the monarchy, basically a bunch of oligarchs um, from the mother country, which is like the country that, you know, they're from and founds um, the colony. The way it worked is that the entity itself business would be bought up, like certain portions of the stock would be bought up by uh, oligarchs or people high in the monarchy or, monarchy or even the monarchs themselves. Then they would all meet and pitch in money to fund expeditions uh, to colonies or fund colonies. Basically like, um, kind of like a hedge fund or like a, like a venture thing. Um, and some early ones in the Americas were relatively small ones created by bigger joint stock companies. So like, um, like kind of how Coca-Cola owns like a bunch of different companies and some of those companies own different branches of that company, sort of like that. Um, in the 1800s, joint stock companies or, um, joint stock companies controlled entire countries and had their own military, like, um. UN peace troops, at least in the military side, because the UN isn't actually a country, it's an establishment, but it does have uh, troops, which is ironic because they're called peace troops. Um, uh, and so early on, the Netherlands and the French and the British and a lot of European countries formed them um, as uh, they discovered the New World and Africa and they found India with the Silk Road and um, the, the British formed the East India Company and the West India Company. Uh, those two controlled most of the other joint stock companies owned by Britain. The Dutch had the Dutch East Indies Company, or the VOC in Dutch. I don't know what it, I don't know what it stands for, but it's called the VOC in uh, Holland. Um, and the Dutch West and the Dutch West Indies, so this East and West, um, which also controlled most of the other J Dutch joint stock companies. The French owned a lot of the Dutch West Indies Company, so they also controlled some of the colonies. So you'll see you'll see a map of um, <clears throat> of America in um, like the really early 1700s, and you'll see how like uh, the Dutch have a few colonies, but then France has a lot of it. But it's really just um, one company owns that area. It's just split between the French and the Dutch. Um, let's see. Um, Mm -hmm. And the Dutch, uh, the Dutch ones also controlled a lot of the Dutch ones, as would, like, as like the British. So they also controlled. Um, so the East companies were the trade colonies in the Indian Ocean, um, uh, East Africa, and Asia. <clears throat> the West companies were the for the Americas and some of Africa. In 1857, a British joint stock company called the East India Company controlled uh, modern-day Myanmar, which was called Burma then, Bangladesh, India, and Pakistan. But later uh, that year, <clears throat> um, in like, I think August, some, some A, A month. Um, <clears throat> um, oh, I lost my place. Uh, okay, um, uh, later that year, uh, in like, around the summertime, just before summertime, um, the army, the sepoys, they're called sepoys, basically Indian soldiers em soldiers employed by the British to fight against, like, the tribes and protect, like, the trade and the company, um, <clears throat> revolted, I think around 100 to 200,000 of the 300,000 revolted, um, but the official British army only had, um, like the Royal Royal Army only had 50,000 men. And in the end, the revolt was put down, and, but the British, um, seeing how like this could lead to other revolts and a lot of revolts on the side had happened, um, the uh, British dissolved the East India Company in 1858 and replaced it with a government directly ruled by the British monarchy called the New British Raj, or just the British Raj, um, <clears throat> which Queen Victoria was placed in charge of because she ruled at that time. And she was the Queen of India, basically, even though she never actually went there and really didn't care much about going there. She just liked the money that she was getting from it. But um, around this time and after until like the 1900s, 
A lot of the other joint stock companies were dissolved and placed under direct rule by the monarchies. And, um, yeah.